excellent. I think we're recording, guys. So thank you all so much for joining us. And I definitely want to start by saying to everyone a part of this call today and the fantastic Collision Roundtable, you know, Nicholas, Tom, Joe, the team here as well, you know, I really want to say, Sky as well, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, really excited to have you all on the phone um, and definitely just wanted to sort of outline a few things just before we start. So I know a number of you all watched our first Collision Roundtable last week and wanted to get involved. So obviously, you know, we wanted to utilize our platform for good as a space where we can share our thoughts, contribute and start that dialogue. So we're going to continue to have a number of these roundtables for as long as it takes. You know, we're really going to utilize our platform for that positive. So having the thoughts of you all joining us today, it's just incredible. So thanks again. Um, in terms of, you know, where we go from here in our stance, I'd like to start by reading the statements. Um, as we started the previous call with, I think it's really important to begin there and then there, and then we can definitely get into the call. So just to get started with, the Collision Drumsticks, the Collision Drumsticks team stand by the black community. Our friends, artists, partners in the fight against racism, injustice, and inequality. We are deeply pained by what has and is currently happening to the black community. We will no longer stand by. We want to get involved and utilize our platform and our voice to help spread awareness and tackle these injustices. We encourage all to spread peace, love, and fight for what is right. So definitely just wanted to get that started by reading that. So thanks so much for everyone's time again. And um, we're going to have a hard stop by the end of the hour. So we will round off and summarize at the end. But uh, yeah, I just want to use this as an opportunity for everyone to just each individually introduce yourself. So name, if you're currently involved in the project, and maybe a little bit about yourself and your background, if that's okay. So who would like to start? Sky, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Sky Gutierrez. I am new on the Collision team. Um, I have a background in uh, versatile business in construction and other fields, but I'm really excited to join Collision at this moment in time and be a part of action moving forward. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Thanks so much, Sky. Thanks for joining us. And, and Sky's going to be taken and being the host for a day and I'm here to support. So thanks so much for having us, Sky, and thanks for sharing. Um, Nicholas, would you like to go next? I had to unmute myself, sorry. Hey, my name is Nicholas Farris, and I'm from Burlington, North Carolina. Um, currently, projects I'm working on, I'm working on my own solo project, um, secretly. You guys don't want to know. <laughs> uh, I'm still working with Camu and the crew, and Eric, uh, the reggae artist. Um, because of COVID, things have slowed down, but we have started working on a couple more projects together. And like I said, I've been working on my own stuff, working on my own craft. And just trying to keep it moving, you know. I don't want to get rusty, so can't let this thing stop me. So. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing, Nick. Absolutely fantastic, mate. And yes, very excited on the secret project. More to follow, and thanks for repping the brand. See that merch, love it. Yes, great stuff. Who would like to go next, Tom? Would you like to share next? Yes, uh, my name is of course Tom Griffin. You guys will all call me TJ. Um, first of all, it's great to finally uh, see you. Yeah for the first time um i'm from i'm from new york uh i play with a rock band called brooklyn bones soon we're going to be recording uh, in the studio soon hopefully within a month or so but not uh it won't be our ep but we're going to release a few singles and um and i'm also just trying to work on my craft you know continue to put out videos promote myself market myself you know on all platforms on social media just working each and every day working hard so once every running again you know, we'll have all the great guys and you know just continue to push and support one another so yeah thanks for having me thanks for joining us tom awesome great start super excited for the coming singles and ep awesome stuff joe finally last but not least my friend please introduce <laughs> yourself hello i'm joe beninati i am actually currently living around portland maine um i moved up here about five years ago but have been i had been playing new york city for about 15 years before that so uh, um, as far as projects, I'm still actually uh, doing a, a bunch of online stuff with some of my old friends in New York, but then I have a lot of stuff going on with local artists and also promoting, um, you know, the, the brands that I endorse and uh, like Collision, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, just trying to, you know, do, do something right, you know, and, and make sure we, uh, we all have a nice, open, honest conversation, so. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely, Joe. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us, mate. Just a real blessing to have you on the call as well. Sky, would you like to comment as well? Um, yeah, so leading into our discussion today, um, so we're going to kind of discuss three questions, and I think that what's great about the questions that we've established is that they are going to be different from last week, and they're going to help us push the conversation and action steps forward. I think last week a lot of people felt overwhelmed and weren't even really sure where to begin, and now we can start really getting into action steps, how we can be more engaged, so our questions heavily um, center around, around that. Um, let's see. So originally, Gabriel Tavares was going to be on our call. He, um, he had a story that he wanted to share with us, and so hopefully we can have him on future roundtables as we move forward. But I do just want to share a little bit about his story and how it ties into our first question. So I'm going to just read a little bit about what he wanted to contribute to the conversation. Hi guys, I hope you're all well and safe. I wanted to say a few words just concerning everything that has happened. Many of you don't know me personally. I'm a security officer here in Boston. During the protest, the building I secure was broken into and trashed. Several things were stolen and even some officers were attacked. I wanna make it clear that I'm not against protesting. That is our right as Americans. However, looting and putting others in danger is not peaceful. Please protest in peace. Things can happen, but if so, go home. I saw protesters fighting with fellow protesters, police spraying mace at people. None of this represents what the people are gathering for in the first place. I do not want to see anyone hurt further. So for all the drummers here that are from mass and plan to protest, please be careful. Wear a mask. Again, go home if things go south. Enjoy the content. Um, I enjoy all the content that you guys put out. I truly believe that this is the best drum community around. Shout Shout out to Carlton here. Um, I appreciate you guys and I support you and I will continue to do the same. So this ties into our first question here and I know that this is a very hot topic in a lot of the conversations around the current events. Uh, peaceful protesting and, and what does that look like and I think that um, there is peaceful protesting and we have seen it work and we have also seen outside influences impact the protests negatively. We've also seen protests uh, be the violence incited by cops. I know that in my city, police officers shot at a pregnant woman who was driving through a uh, driving through an intersection at the protest after curfew. And so they did nothing wrong. That was directly incited by police. And, and so I think that this, this is what makes that conversation complicated because it is our right to protest, but also there's so much going on that it's really hard to discern facts. So I would really love to hear your guys' opinion on protesting and how we can kind of move forward and take this protesting and push it forward to action. So let me know who would like to go first. Well, I could go first. Uh, being that I'm from North Carolina, I've seen a lot. I mean, I actually grew up three minutes from where the KKK was born. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, where I went to high school, middle school, high school, I mean, I hate to say it, but it was kind of normal. But as far as to answer your question about protesting, when we had protesting in school, you know, trying to be equal. And as far as you know, keeping the peace, I mean, it can be hard sometimes because of your emotions get the best of you. And you can't always act on your emotions. You gotta have a level head. You know, you don't go out here and protest. Like you said, you got COVID-19, you got so many things you have to worry about. Me being a family man, as much as I would love to protest, I can't right now. I mean, I got to think of the safety of my one-year-old, my pregnant uh, soon-to-be wife, uh, she's carrying twins. You know, I can't risk that. So I, I take my um, peaceful protest to social media. You know, I let my voice be heard. Um, what this world needs is a lot of understanding. We got to have these conversations like we're having. We just need to sit and talk to each other. I talk to my uh, colleagues at work. And I love everybody at work. I mean, we all can sit there and talk and not be disrespectful to each other. Everybody has different opinions. But like you're saying, with the protesting, with the police, not 
every policeman is bad. You know, it's bad apples like everybody's been saying. But me growing up in North Carolina, I've seen a lot of the bad apples, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, I could go on and on. I'm not going to take my whole time, but I'm just saying as far as the people protest, we just need to have those conversations and, and respect each other. I think that can go a, whole, a lot of way, a long way. Thanks for sharing, Nicholas No one. Con congratulations on, on the twins and the little one. That's fantastic. And yeah, understandably, you know, absolutely, you know, the safety of you, 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 you seem to be wife, Beyonce. Congratulations there as well. You know, that, that's huge. And yeah, it's just, I can't even begin to imagine, you know, your experience growing up. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm so sorry to hear that right round the corner, you know, it's just disgusting and should never have been. And yeah, just, just, just completely atrocious. But you know, you lead in with such, you know, faith and such positivity. You know, that's it. Just having that dialogue, starting it, and hopefully utilizing platforms like you know what we're doing here to to start that conversation and a meeting of mind. You know, and that's what it's all about. So great, thank you. Who would like to go next? I'll, I'll go next. Uh, oh yeah, congratulations, Nick, on on your family, man. Um, uh, I I actually I like the protest. I just uh, the other day um I saw like a long you know a group of people protesting and it just it was just great to see the unity everybody coming together supporting. Um, I think we we should do that. We have the right, you know, any anything any rights or anything just to stand up together. You know, I love seeing that, but we should definitely go about it in a, in a peaceful way. You know, as much as possible, as long as you know as we continue it. Um, I don't, I don't really agree with the, the with the looting and and all that stuff and setting things on fire. It just, uh, it just, it doesn't make us any better as the police brutality. Um, I know people they have their different opinions on that, but uh, I just think you know if we just continue to, you know, push our point across, you know, each and every day consistently, and represent ourselves in the in the country the best way as possible, you know, we can continue. It's not going to happen overnight, but we could continue to see the progress, you know, day by day, as long as we're consistent, show our young generation to see the, you know, and it's great to see the kids out there as well, you know, uh, standing up for what they write, what they believe in. And, you know, it just, it's just a trend that goes on and on. I really, I love to see it. And it's a great experience as well. So. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Tom. No, absolutely. And yeah, it's just, you know, it's your right. You know, it's crazy seeing sort of the dynamic between how the U.S. it's, it's, it's handled and how it's partaking in the process out in the process here as well. Only today I was watching the news and, and, and seeing the process, protests in London. And, you know, I completely agree. You know, I, I, you know, if you have a voice, make it heard, you know, stand out, stand up, get out there. And, and like, both of you gentlemen have commented on so far it's just there's a small you know a small portion or proportion of the speakers out who are looking to cause havoc looking for trouble and it, they're not there for the right reasons so it's making sure that the media doesn't skew that i think and and and, and presenting that as the you know, voice of the, the rule, you know, the whole, you know, that's the whole, you know, environment. And that's, you know, what the representations of everyone when it's not the case at all. And I definitely feel like, you know, speaking out, standing up and making sure that that voice is not challenged is, is the biggest thing as well. So yeah, thanks so much, Tom. I completely stand by that, mate. And that's great to hear. Joe, would you like to contribute, please? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, Nicholas, thanks for saying that about uh, family and kids, because I know my wife and I have a lot of guilt over not being able to get out there because we need to also take care of our home, you know, so we're doing whatever we can. And that's actually why I reached out to Carlton about wanting to be a part of this because I was like, man, I got to do something, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, my take on everything is I think you have to be the most authentic you can when you're when you're dealing with something so huge. Um, I feel like a lot of people jump on bandwagons. And then they just kind of, uh, then it becomes more about, um, I might be wrong, but then that's when I think a lot of the looting and things happen because then it's not coming from their heart. It's not like they're, you know, you're not, you're not supporting anything besides trying to be a part of something. Um, so I think that's the biggest part is be 
be honest with yourself about why you're doing things. And I think that will lead you to do it the right way. And, and, you know, on top of that, still keeping an eye out to protect yourself and the people around you. Um, I know, um, actually another, I was talking to another collision artist at one point that's also in security and stuff's happened with him, you know, where protesters have come up to him while he's trying to protect what he's doing, where he's doing his job. And, um, you know, we got, we, we can't, I don't think we can turn against each other. The protests are supposed to be about coming together. And, and the thing that I've seen is that the, the worst parts happen when, when people start turning. You know, everyone, everyone has a right to believe what they believe, but everyone also has to keep their eyes and ears open to be able to listen to the other side. You know, I know, I know Noel said that last call about, about um, you know, being a listener too, not just a talker. And I think that's, that's what happens. A lot of people keep talking, but they're not listening to, to anyone else. And if people start listening, they might actually have the same ideas. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, that's my take on it. It's just about authenticity and about um, using your heart and not just your head and not just like your brawn, you know, so. Thank you so much. And, and you know, thanks for your contributions, Joe, because, you know, definitely, you know, some advice there that I need to just take on board as well as I'm sure a lot can as well, you know, lead with both rather than just one and, you know, make sure that, you know, you like you said, there for the right reasons, you, you spread and, you know, and, and that honesty piece as well, you know, are you honestly there for that right reason? No, it's, it's you know, it, it really is. It really is powerful for sure. Um, Sky, would, would you like to contribute and, and you know, share your thoughts and feelings? Yeah, definitely. Um, I really would like to tap in on something that both Nicholas and Joe kind of said in regards to being able to do what you can. And I think that that's something that we need to be able to distinguish silence versus capacity. Um, so, you know, I see tons of people in my community or in my professional space not being vocal or active. It doesn't mean that they're not participating, um, but I think that it can, it can kind of be hard because I am still keeping an eye on that. I'm keeping an eye on what is being said, who is not saying anything. And especially for the last seven years in construction, I have been one of like the only women in certain spaces. And sometimes I'm, I'm biracial. So sometimes I'm the only woman of color. And so when I see the group that I come from or the workplace that I've worked in the last seven years say nothing, it speaks volumes to how they've interpreted me for years. But I think being able to do what you can in the capacity that you can is so critical because what we have to do is understand that not everybody can protest either physically or they have family concerns, health concerns. I'm high risk and asthmatic. So uh, last week when the cops were shooting tear gas into crowds, that could have actually killed me. And so that was something that I couldn't participate in at that point in time, but I could share information. I could learn from my friends who have tools and resources and experiences to share. I can sign petitions. I can call police departments. I can call the mayor. I can call my congressperson. And so I spent that week when everything was chaotic here, really being more vocal in, in my, my political power, calling my representative, calling the police department and harassing the police department about cases that are still going unaddressed and calling constantly. Like I've, I called the Colorado police, Colorado Springs police department six times until I talked to a human. And, um, you know, like it was that kind of action. So I couldn't participate in, in the protests, but then once things became, be, uh, started to calm down here, we were able to participate in those protests. Those protests were then better addressed by our police force here. And my husband and I had the capacity to donate snacks and water. And so we had, we had different capacities. It doesn't mean that we weren't involved. It just meant that we were involved in different ways. And I think that that's a really important thing to keep in mind is that, you know, some people are not going to change their opinions. Some people are going to remain silent and that is hurtful and it's hard but also just because some people are as vocal, it doesn't mean that they care or that they're not making those actions. And so that's, that's how we can take action in our own life, learning, participating in our politics, you know, understanding who our Congress people are, what bills are in place nationally and locally that impact our lives so that way we can 
ask and demand for change, but it's, it's hard also to face that against the fact that it had to get this bad. It had to get this bad for us to see substantial change. And that's how we have to, like, that's how substantial change comes. You know, Pride Month started as a riot. You know, the Stonewall riots were a riot <laughs> against police brutality, against the queer community. And here we are now with Pride Month. And even though, sadly to say, there's some legislation that was rolled back this week, um, that started as a riot. It started as active protest to demand change. And so it, it can be kind of hard to counterbalance fighting for equal rights when people don't want to give it to us and being better people than our oppressors. So that is hard. That's fundamentally hard. Um, to kind of move from the concept of peaceful protesting, um, we're going to move into another kind of hot, hotter topic that I think that there's a lot of conversation on. Um, the concept of all lives matter versus black lives matter. And I think that this is a boiling point for a lot of people, especially a lot of people who don't understand the movement or maybe still working through internal bias that they may not recognize that they have or are unwilling to change. So I've encountered people in the last couple of weeks who are unwilling to change. They know that they don't want this treatment for them, but they are willing to allow this treatment to happen for other people. So I would love to hear your experience with the all lives matter versus black lives matter rhetoric and how we can kind of coach people in our lives to see, see why black lives matter and all lives matter can't matter until black lives do. So I would love to hear your guys' experiences in that rhetoric. Um, it's funny you brought that up as a topic because yesterday, before I ended my shift at work, I had a conversation with a UPS driver. And uh, he was basically saying, you know, all lives matter. I was like, you're right, all lives do matter. But until black lives matter, all lives do not matter. I mean really think about it we're being treated like this for so long over 400 years in the united states and you just got in it it kind of blew me away that he said that because you know he's from north carolina too and i'm like you ought to know what black lives matter really stands for it's not saying oh just black lives matter no it means that we feel like our lives do not equal to as much as white people so I mean, until people, like I said in the first question, educate themselves and listen. We got to listen to each other. Um, if we can actually talk to each other without getting angry <laughs> and, and just actually have the compassion to actually listen and understand the words that are coming out of each other's mouths. And I can have a conversation with anybody and, and tell them, you know, black, black lives matter. You know, my life matters. My son's life matters. My unborn son's life matters. I, it's not a day that I don't think about them. I'm like, I got to be around for them. I got to make smart decisions. And like I said, it's just funny you brought that up because I had that conversation with a guy yesterday and, and I think he got the gist of what I was trying to say to him. Uh, but it, you know, you got to be willing to have an open ear, you know, to hear that side of Black Lives Matter. Because if you're setting your ways and you're just like, all lives matter, no, all lives matter, then I've, I've changed, this is me. I came to the point where if you're that stubborn, then I'm done. I cannot have a conversation with you. I'm going to move on to the next. Because you already made your mind up. But I pray that soon your, your mind will change. I feel like only a person can only change their mind if they're willing to change. And I know not a lot of people are religious. I am. Um, I don't try to push my religion on people. Not, and, and my religion says that. Do not push your religion on other people that believe in different things. I respect other people's religions as well. And I feel like if you are following something, then you have some type of peace in your body and you got to have peace now in order to survive. Because if you walk around angry, it's not going to solve any of this. None.
Thanks for sharing, Nicholas. And, and you know, yeah. I completely... oh, I'm sorry, Sky. Uh, go, uh, go on, Tom, please. Oh, oh, bless you, Sky. I saw you sneezing over there. <laughs> um, no, nah, I, I, I completely agree uh, with Nick. I think people, they misunderstand uh, with Black Lives Matter. They, they, they believe that we're just saying that it's just about us. Um, but it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's just, people are delusional sometimes. They think that racism doesn't exist and it, it clearly does. And it's just us, you know, those people who are saying, well, all lives matter, but that's because, you know, they're, they're fine and they're not experiencing or going through what a particular group is going through. So they're, you know, they look at us as we're stubborn or we're just, we're just angry upset, and just causing a bunch of havoc. And that's not it. We're just speaking up for ourselves. We're just standing up for what is right and saying, hey, guys, like, look at us. Look at what we're going through. Let's all stand up together and make things right. What we're going through and, you know, and just have the same rights as everyone else. Because you, you see it like um, when other people, when they, when they uh, go through things with the police and of other color, because I've seen a video of an elderly guy, Caucasian, who got knocked down by the police. And African-Americans were quickly to respond and say that wasn't right as well. And, you know, African-Americans, when we're going through the violence as well, we was able to speak up for other people of color who was going through, you know, bad things as well. So that that just proves that we're not just thinking of us. We just, we just want our rights as well. And so everybody could just live on this earth peacefully and do what they you know just just live here with love kindness and everybody could just do what they you know do what they can so that's you know it's it's just it's not just you know black lives matter it's definitely all lives matter just you know hey let's just fix this problem that we have with the african-american community so that's Thanks so much for sharing, TJ. Joe, would you like to chime in too on this? Yes, I would. <laughs> um, no, um, the the thing is, I, I'm going to butcher this, but I heard someone say it beautifully. Um, someone said, um, if you go to a doctor for a broken arm, the doctor says, I'm going to put a full body cast on you, <laughs> you know? And he's like, but it's just my arm. And he's like, but your whole body matters, you know? But, you know, so like, with that, you can't move, you can't breathe, you can't do anything, you know? Um, so I, I totally agree. It's, it's all, I mean, I'm mixed race also. And it's like, you know, there, there's, there's so much I've learned in growing up in two different cultures, you know, in the white culture and Filipino culture. Um, and it's, it's so important to, to realize that all lives matter and that Black Lives Matter, more so now to make the whole picture, you know? Um, I think All Lives Matter is, is, is man, honestly, I, I think it, it's a cop-out, you know? Just to say like, I'm okay with my opinion and I'm okay to just protect myself but not my brothers and sisters around me, you know? So um, I think it's important to, to kind of eliminate that at least until things are equal. And, and I think that's what we're all going for, or most of us, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's so easy to discredit um, someone saying Black Lives Matter when I, I feel like it's almost like you're not looking at yourself. I feel like you're just saying it, just to be like, well, I matter too, but man, you got to make the change to, to, to make everyone matter and, and, and help each other out and be honest about it. And, and if you're saying all lives matter, then you have to be honest to yourself about why you're saying that, you know? Thank you guys so much for sharing. I know that this is a really hard, a hard thing to really make clear to people who may not fully understand their implicit bias. Um, and I think we're starting to hear a lot of comparisons that help, um, like Joe said, make this like a little bit more understandable. The one that I've heard is that, you know, my house is on fire. I'm gonna go put out that fire. And someone over here is like, but what about my house? 
but, but your house isn't on fire, Susan. It's your house matters. We appreciate your house and your house matters, but this house is literally on fire. And what set fire to this house was the institution that built this house. So we have to put this fire out. This does matter, but this fire is active and burning. So we need to really, really address this. And I think that there's something that Joe mentioned that I think is, is really important here is that it's a cop out. Um, you know, uh, we have having to deal with our own internal bias. And I know that this is something that I've had to work on a lot over, uh, over the last few years, but even just being more vocal and honest about it now, coming from the Hispanic community, I heard a lot of racism against the black community from within my Hispanic community. And it had, I heard it from such an early age that it, it shaped possibly ways that I viewed the world and it has taken a really long time to dismantle things that weren't my inherent idea. You know, that racism wasn't my idea. And so having to dismantle that and say like, oh, this is my implicit bias as a Hispanic woman against a community because my community felt that way for whatever reason, I have to be able to serve my community and help them address their issues, but we can't let our issues be the reason that we take away from Black Lives Matter. And so it's actually forced me to address within my own community, my own family, my own circle, like, hey, bro, that's not cool. Like, we don't, we don't talk like that. We don't do that. That rhetoric is done. We are going to bury it now. And so it, it, it is a cop out. It's hard. It's hard to say that you've had this internal bias your whole life and you didn't know that it was there or that you didn't see the problems that other communities were facing because you were either worried about your own or the prejudice from your family prevented you from seeing the disadvantageous treatment of other communities around you and so it is complicated but i think that we are all having like tangible conversations with people um, who are willing to change that that can kind of be the hard part is is people wanting to be willing to change i don't know if any of you guys have experienced people and i know that nicholas kind of said you have but like if they're unwilling to change they're never going to be your ally in the first place and so you can't change their mind they're never going to be on your side but that's hard that's hard and that feels crappy it feels so bad um but thank you guys for sharing all of your guys's opinions on this and your experiences. I really value you being vulnerable in this moment in time and talking about your lives and your perspectives because it's hard and it's vulnerable and it's, it's scary. But, you know, for so many people, even like me, I get to turn it off. You know, I get to turn it off when I come home. And for so many people in the Black community, you don't. And so that's something that I really would like to highlight in this conversation between All Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter, or even Blue Lives Matter versus Black Lives Matter. You carry this with you when you wake up. It shapes the way that you talk to your children. You know, you have to live your life in such a substantially different way that other people can't understand. And until we no longer have to have families teach their black sons to not wear hoodies, to not, you know, keep, not reach for anything in their car when they're pulled over, until that happens, until there is equity built up for the black community there, all lives can't matter because that doesn't happen even for me you know, or even, even for other minorities, because we can recognize that, like, we have had discrimination, we have experienced bad things out of systemic issues, but we still don't fear for our lives in the same capacity. And so I really just want to honor you guys for sharing your guys' stories today and your, your insight on this, because I know that it's hard. Um, also, I'm sorry, I just wanted to add something too. Um, some that Nicholas said was brought up an interesting point about religion. And um, the thing that I was always brought up with is um, I was brought up Roman Catholic. My wife is Jewish, so we're bringing up our kids both. Um, you know, the thing is that, that I always believe with religion was that you don't look at the differences, in my opinion. You look at the common threads. And it's always been the golden rule for me. And, and I think that's got to be huge in this day and age, you know, because um, I think people are, are you know, this, the, 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 first of all, the whole COVID thing has really um, brought people to a place where they have to look at themselves. They have to look at themselves. They're stuck in their homes. They're stuck with their families. They're, they're stuck. And, and it's, it's, it's a time. And, and look in the mirror is nasty sometimes. But you have to 
have that compassion towards everyone else going through the same stuff. And you have to have that compassion towards people going through either less or bigger stuff, you know? Um, so again, Nick, thanks for, thanks for bringing that up. Cause the whole religion thing for me is so important. Cause that could also, as you said, it could be polarizing, but I think that it can be that, that message of like, you know, take care of each other. What would you want me to do for you? What will you do for me? You know, those kind of things. So just wanted to add that. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Joe. No, absolutely. And, and when you were saying that, looking in the mirror, you know, I'm a, I'm a white man, you know, I've never experienced what a black man has had to go through just the same as a Hispanic, you know, I, I, you know, every race, you know, I can only go from sort of that, that personal sort of me. And I think this has been, like you said, that true reflective period where you can, you know, you've got nowhere else to go. You can't escape, you know, you're in COVID and it's given me, a, you know, opportunity to think. And it is the idea of, well, what can I do? What can I use my privilege for? What am I able to do? Well, look, let's use the, the platform. Let's use this, you know, this and this, and let's use this more than this to understand and better sort of educate myself on the experiences of others. So thank you everyone for sharing. And I'm so sorry that you've had to go through certain experiences that you've had to. And like you said, exactly what you said, Sky, you know, and I just want to touch back on that, you know, you, that turning it on and off, you know, some, in, you know, most, you know, individuals, you know, I can turn it off. I can go home as a white guy and know that, you know, that's it. I'm not going to have certain things happen to me. I know that I'm not going to get stopped in the street if I'm walking or just milling around or doing so. Whereas a black man will, you know, or is like more likely to by, you know, an extreme percentage. And it's just, it's just atrocious and, and it should never have happened. And there's this disparity currently and this, for, you know, and until something happens, it's never going to be all lives matter, you know, because black lives at this moment in time, do not matter and we need to bring it up to here before we even move forward with any of this you know and that's how i look at things and it's a case of what can we do to make sure that that happens as soon as possible and not only the case but look back and go you know we need to address certain certain wrongs you know and it's having conversations with certain individuals predominantly older individuals as well and this does you know and and, and of course you know individuals you know everyone's different everyone differs the opinion but if they're not comfortable in changing you know that's on them. You know, it's that subject versus objective. If I, you know, if I've done everything I can to say, look, that isn't right, calling it out when you can, try and educate them. You can lead that person to, you know, something, but you, you, you know, they've got to get themselves over the, the finish line. And that's really important to me. You know, if, if I can do what I can and I'll wait, you know, and I can go home at the end of the day knowing that I have done that, then, then that's what I need to be doing. And I need to set that precedent every day of the week. And I need to make sure that I'm, helping others to, to assist in that. Um, yeah, definitely just wanted to mention that as well. And just, you know, chip in as well, you know, and I really appreciate everyone's time, really appreciate everyone's thoughts. I think it's such an important conversation, but yes, all lives matter. Yes, that's a, that's a given, but not until black lives matter. And that's really important. That's the, that's the fundamental. If I can say one thing, quick, uh, Carlton, I really appreciate you. Uh, I was talking to Joe, it was yesterday, Joe, or uh, day four, and I was talking like you're like a, a brother to me. I mean, I really the conversations we had, and for you to open up your platform and and share this, have this conversation, uh, I'm honored, and and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really thank you for doing this. It shows the love that the company has for all of us, not just the black drummers, you know, Hispanic, all of us. You know, you have respect for all of us, and you want to see all of us grow. And I thank you for having this platform for us to share and had this conversation. I just want to thank you for that. Thank you, Nick, but no thank you. You know, this is what we need to be doing. This is a must. This shouldn't, you know, there's, this, is, this is our duty to do that. You know, I appreciate you. I appreciate you are most definitely my brother, just like Joe, you know, Tom, Sky, we're all a family and this is it. This is the beauty of what we do here, but it's important to utilize this and, and spread that, resonate that with others. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. But no, this is what we have to do. This is so important that we stand up and get this done. Get, you know, do our part, play our part, and get involved for sure. But I really just want to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you to all your contributions so far. Sky, do you want to lead in with them, uh, potentially the next question? I think it's a, a nice time to move forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Nick. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys for, for really just opening up this conversation and helping us share with our community how we can just better be mindful of each other make action where we can. Um, and I think that this is going to be like the next big conversation point for others to kind of generate action. 
Um, let's dive deeper into the, the concept of policing power and privilege. So right now there's a lot of conversation about defunding the police um, and what that really looks like and, and how, and I think that no matter what we called it, whether we called it defunding the police or reallocating funds, there would be someone who'd say, no, we can't do that. We still need the cops to handle this. But what we have seen is that we can reallocate resources to departments that are, can better serve certain calls that go to 911. Um, so there's a lot of concept of how much power we give them, what the distribution of wealth and how that can better impact our community, what kind of power we are really giving this one department over so many aspects of our lives and kind of addressing that privilege. And so, um, I mean, I would really love to kind of uh, hear what you guys think about, you know, restructuring the police because some people say restructuring, some people say defund. It is a really hot topic and this is where we're going to create the most change. Uh, I did, I did hear something about, uh, I think their pension with, uh, taking away their, uh, well, not taking away, but kind of like decreasing their full pension just to, and they'll probably change their action or have them think twice. Um, I haven't really thought much on that, um, which is a great, uh, great topic, great conversation, but, um, it definitely should be a uh, new established, uh, rules, regulations on, um, the police they're approaching also um because it's, it's to me it's, it's pretty scary to think like you know you can literally be minding your own business and um and like sky touched on it earlier we have to teach each other teach the young people on what to do and what not to do when being stopped by the police um but um yes that's definitely a great question i wish i, I wish i had a uh, more answer to that but um yeah definitely like with the with the pension or on certain things that uh cops shouldn't or should not do it, it definitely should be clarified so yeah i agree uh what i would like to add uh about that uh, topic is i just hate that um the dare programs when i was growing up the dare programs in the police force was was very very uh, important in schools uh, that that the guys that were in the dare program, the policemen, you know, they got to know the kids, uh, the neighborhood, and I feel like they have went away from that. I mean, you're just some of them just targeting people just because of skin color or the way they look before they dress, or and I feel like the funding is on certain programs. Like where I live, <laughs> the sheriff has this armored-looking tank, and he pr paraded in the last Christmas parade we had. And I was like, okay, you really just letting us know how you really feel. <laughs> There's no need for you to have something, a, a vehicle of that type, you know, in the community. I mean, you're striking fear into your community. That's what you're doing. And what you should be doing is protecting us. So I feel like had, if they, when they start defunding some of this money they're going to them, they won't be able to afford to get stuff like that and some of the weapons that they have. Um, do more education in the community. Go and, and learn about your community that you're policing. And therefore, if you do come across somebody or an issue, you, you had a conversation with that person, you know that person, so you won't be quick to react to shoot or put them in a chokehold or put your knee on their neck. You know, just let's be wise. I mean, let's not be animals, you know? God didn't put us here to be like that, treat each other like that. So I feel like defunding the police with certain things that will help, will it fix everything? No, you gotta, like I said, them bad apples, <laughs> they gotta get pushed out of office. We gotta vote. I know some people say, oh, well, my vote don't ever count, don't count. Yes, it does. If it didn't count, they wouldn't be trying to stop you from voting. And like in Georgia, they, they are so messed up in Georgia. They, they said something was wrong with the machines, all those people would line up to vote. I'm definitely going to vote because that's, uh, that's going to be a part of change. We got to get these. I feel like we should have terms here, term limits. We got so many old people up there that just set in their ways. They just need to be 
pushed out of office. We need some fresh faces, some fresh minds, some people that think like us. I'd be so glad when people like our age get up there because we are more respectful to each other than the people that, that are that age because that's not working. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's not working. I can keep going on, but I'm going to stop. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've been, you know, I'm not, I'm not fully on this, this subject, so I don't want to speak out of, out of line, but, um, yes, I think reallocating would be really important. Another perspective I heard is that the scope of what cops have to do is so great that I can't imagine that that stress doesn't make them more agitated to do stuff <laughs> that they shouldn't be. Um, so. I think lessening what they have to do and have them focus on what they need to do um, would be a wise decision and, and could as a whole help um, at least part of the situation. So, I mean, that's just my two cents. Thanks so much, Joe. No, I just want to chip in as well. And I think you're so right. There's that much bureaucracy. And I think it touches on a few points that Nicholas, Tom and Joe had said. Firstly, this isn't something that I'm hugely schooled on or educated on again. I think it's only came up in the news recently over here. So from what I've seen, it's, it's only sort of the past couple of weeks that this has been discussed. I think there needs to be yet yeah, certainly reform. I think there needs to be reform from the ground up. Everything needs to be looking at. Everything's got to be on the table. You know, we need to look at every aspect and consider what was, you know, what we've done in the past. What, what's there? What's the precedent? What are we going to do moving forward? What is acceptable? What isn't acceptable? I feel like, you know, in terms of these, yeah, the, these, these machines, these, these cars, whatever, you know, Nick, this tank you were describing, I, I've never seen one of those in England. You know, we don't even have guns at the minute uh, on that sort of low, you know, boots on the ground level. Um, and, you know, if, if anything, to give you some context of England, they've actually just act, enacted more legislation to increase police powers. And I can understand, and I think it's really important that you touched on it, Joe. We, you know, as, as sort of citizens, I don't have the, underst I never know what, a, you know, a police officer has to go through as well. You know, putting that vest on, getting out there, going into the day to day and working on protecting and serving. I can't relate to that. Just like, I, I'm, you know, although I can try my best, I don't see it from that subject perspective. So it's, it's very, yeah, I can understand the stress that comes with that, but it's also doing more. What, what can you do? Like Nick said, getting involved, you know, utilizing and, and maybe taking away, de maybe not defunding completely, you know, maybe not, it's not, quite, maybe not that, that's the right question. There, maybe the better question is, what do we need to look at where we need to reallocate and make sure that that money is actually going to use? We, we as the people can see where it's going to use, bringing them positive minds into play and then, you know, bringing in the best, you know, it seems like we are seeing the same perspectives from what has been for the last hundred and hundred and hundred of years. It's like, you know, if we're updating everything, we need to update everything. Um, and yeah, I think it's a really important question that certainly needs to have answers. And I hope that, you know, the, the legislation is there and it's relative. And it's, I think we're always going to face this loggerhead in some regard throughout life. But I feel like if we can just get on the same page as legislators, as citizens, as enforcement, and just have the dialogue and have a conversation and have representatives that can speak there. And I know there are some, but I think it's having more conversation and building that community back up. Because over here in the UK, I, I, I was hearing stories from my parents and my grandparents at times where there'd be street parties. You know, everyone knew everyone, that community. Where's that gone? You know, you, you barely know your neighbor now, nowadays. And, you know, as much as you try, it's a two-way street. And you, and you want to see that happen and play out in, in society. So I think it's getting back to where things were in that regard, but also using the technology we have to take steps forward. And uh, I know Amazon and a few, and it, this, this can circle and segue into so many things, but I know Amazon, IBM have just mentioned about scaling back their um, surveillance program. I, I, think that, I think that's a necessary, you know, we, we can't have Big Brother watching us 24 seven and, and saying, hey, yeah, yeah, no, you know, how can you live? You know, I think it's just crazy. So yeah, that's my two cents as well. Just want to get it in there, sorry guys. It was just whilst it's on my mind. Sky, sorry, Bob. No, thank you, Carlton. And also, like, thank you for giving us some perspective from what it's like where where you live. I think that what we're looking at here is trying to structure some of our police force to reflect some European standards because, you know, 
here, cause like I used to be a cosmetologist. I did more school hours than a police officer. And that's that. So there's just tons of systematic issues just compounding each other. A, we don't know the stress. B, there's so many funding issues, you know, like lack of training, like the willingness to lead the police force from a militant perspective, like Nicholas said, like the tanks, that's an issue. Tear gas is an issue. Uh, tear gas is illegal in the Geneva Convention. So we can't even fight our enemies in war with tear gas. That is illegal. But we are totally okay with uh, unleashing that on our c civilians. And that's, that's an issue. So it, it doesn't matter what we look like. I think that the defunding makes it feel very aggressive. And I think that that phrasing is scaring everybody. But what they really talk about in defunding the police is taking budgets that are sometimes the budget of small nation military budgets and reallocating those dollars into services to a pull that pressure off police because we like joe said we don't know those pressures and it, it has to be hard to be a good cop and to be in stressful hard situations on a non-stop basis they know what they're getting into they are putting their lives on the line to serve the community and that is so hard and i commend the cops that are willing to serve the community in that regard but it has to be stressful and there's so much to it that you know they're doing all kinds of calls that they shouldn't have to a wellness check should definitely be done by a social worker you know <laughs> you know like those kind of things like how we how we interact with the homeless like we could pull some of those police interactions and really reallocate the money into social services that actually benefit the community and generate real change and actually don't put the risk of um don't put the risk at, at at the hands of the police officers or the civilians but i also think um one of the things that i've been hearing a little bit more about is the police blue wall of impunity and so that's also something that makes it hard for good police officers to stand out because the the corruption that we're hearing about and the corruption that we're seeing is on such a massive scale that good cops can't even do good and it makes it really hard like when when uh, we were briefly talking about that older 75 year old gentleman in buffalo who was pushed down by the cops uh recently so two men pushed him he fell and hit his head you can hear the gasps in the video you already know before the video pans to him that he is hurt and you can see one officer leaning in to try to pick him up and check in on him and he is pushed on by his colleagues and so this man is in critical condition. And that is one man in the police force that said, no, this was wrong. I need to check on this man because that is my duty to serve. And his partners said, no, you do not do that. And then in response, those same police officers quit in retaliation because those two officers were charged with assault. And, you know, that was an unprovoked situation. And I think that that's, that's where we are starting to have these really hard conversations, but it's a really big, big monster and we have to take it on a little bit at a time and we have to take it on locally. So like Nicholas said, vote, V-O-T-E, vote. Uh, we just got our ballots. There's a lot of, a lot of mismanagement of voting in this country. Please go out and vote. That's, that's the one thing that I can commend because that's the way that you can generate real change. I know that in Colorado, some of our leaders in the Black Lives Matter and in our school districts have worked to create a bill that uh, abolishes the school to prison pipeline for children, as well as making it impossible or actually illegal for a cop who abuses his power inside our state to get a job in any other county. He is, they are no longer allowed to work in any other county at all. And so it's about taking those little bit, those little steps but we have to take it like step at a time and it's hard and there's no right way to really go about this, but it is really hard to tackle. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking, taking that time to really talk about just even, even like what you would want to see out of, out of change. Because I think that up until this point in time, we didn't see that change could be possible. It didn't feel like change could be real. And now that we're seeing little wins, little victories, you know, chokeholds are being being made illegal in the police force. No knock warrants are now out. And so we're starting to see little 
bits of incremental change and now the pressure is really on because we are having these conversations but we also have to be diligent about continuing to have these conversations so we can't just have the conversation this week next week the week after we're gonna have to have these conversations six months from now until we're all seeing more equity and and especially for the black community like you deserve equity not just equality you deserve equity and i really want and i'm so excited to be a part of a company that is willing to help bring this platform up for you guys so that you have equity to stand on and that you can stand on the same level as us so i really just want to thank you for your vulnerability thank you for sharing um carlton how much time do we have left do we still have time to jump, jump into a couple topics here um i think we're good for about ooh, I, I, if i say one thing it's probably the other thing so let's give it sort of maybe eight nine more minutes and then sort of round off just so we it's so we can get it uploaded to igtv guys we may yeah. not be able to but look as, as much time yeah eight nine more minutes we should be good thanks guy okay. and again thank you for for those co you know co contributions and you know your words as well you know it's your words of wisdom you know and knowledge is power and i want to just you know it's educate myself from from your perspective as well and you know, and I'm gaining so much insight as well. I know that the guys are, and again, it's just that free flow. It's that conversation. It's just so needed. It's so necessary. And, you know, you said uh, we need to take those European standards. We need to also adopt yours, other standards as well, because it's, we're not innocent out of all this. You know, the UK isn't innocent, just like France, like I mentioned on that previous, you know, it's, it's we only look at ourselves and look at what's happening in our states, figuring out where we go from here and, pick, you know, taking the best from everywhere and, and, and not meeting the minds. And not meeting the minds for sure. Sorry, Sky, I just want to add that as well. Because I, I didn't want to feel like the UK got off on, on, on that. Because we, we, we certainly haven't. And we should definitely, well, we 100% need to address it. But yeah, if you want to lead in with one final, maybe one final topic or one final question. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks. Thanks for just filling in, Carlton. Like we, this is a great opportunity for us to have like a conversation. Change is really made through conversations. Um, one thing that I would really like to maybe just ask you guys to share, not only for yourselves as something as like a takeaway from this, but also something that you can share with the Collision family and your communities. What is one way that you or or maybe you would recommend taking care of yourself, your health, your mental well-being in this moment of time while still trying to move forward and taking action? Like what, what have you been doing to pres preserve a little bit of that space for you? And I think that that could be something that we can kind of round this out on as a little action step of take care of yourself, but keep pushing that conversation forward. So I would really love to hear from you guys on that. Um, well, for me, I'm a Christian. So uh, through these times, uh, pre, uh, having a, a closer relationship with God and, and stuff like that has, has helped me to grow stronger mentally, physically, spiritually. Um, I think, well, I, it's been an idea in terms of the blackout. Uh, you know, uh, I think it was, I think it's for July 7th, I believe, where uh, for one day, you know, don't spend any, any dollars. Because, you know, it's clearly in America has always been about money. It's always been about money, power, and everything. So I feel like if we actually come through with that day and just not spend anything, like all the money they'll lose, you know, economically, how they'll take a hit, um, that's one way. And it'll really open their eyes. Because people don't understand when you come together in unity, how much have. Um, and all just when you stressed it plenty, plenty of times, but we can't stress it enough, you know, no matter how many times you say it, because none of this matters, your opinions or anything, what you say or what you think, like if you don't vote at the end of the day, it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean anything. So, you know, voting, you know, however we could come together, you know, whether it's financially, business-wise or whatever, where the government starts to look like, oh, like these people serious, they're for real, they're really coming together. So I think, uh, you know, this, this, you know, those ways, you know, voting and the blackout, stuff like that can really, really open the eyes of the government and take things more seriously and know that we mean business for everyone and that, you know, it's mad. Thanks for sharing, Tom. And, and uh, I think it cut out a little bit, but we got, yeah, the whole the whole gist of, of what you were saying. So thank you so much. Yeah, and thanks again for your contributions throughout the entire call as, as well as now as well. Who, who else would like to go? Any, any other thoughts?
Uh, I'll go. <laughs> um, so, um, yes, I think the thing is um, learning to uh, love each other is a big thing as far as just an overall big thing. As far as uh, internally, prayer, meditation, drumming, <laughs> all these things are so huge in, in just keeping peace, you know, because it, it is, it's, I mean, because it is a, a crazy time where it's like this explosion of everything happening at once, you know. Um, as everyone has said in the past too, know your history. I mean, the thing is, I remember um, I was studying jazz in the Bronx when I was younger and I just couldn't get it. And, and my head was just not getting it. And uh, a black friend of mine said to me, watch the Ken Burns jazz um, videos. He's like, because jazz came from, from pain and hurt and slavery, and you can't just play jazz superficially. You have to feel all those things. And um, that hit me hard, because I was like, wow, that, that, the, the, the black community has, everything we do in music is, is from the black community. And unfortunately, from slavery. I remember learning jazz history. It was all about the slaves getting together at, at Congo Square in New Orleans. And that was the only way they could communicate was through drums. And um, so I think it's really important to know, know your facts. Because if you know your facts and you're a musician, it's not going to be all lives matter anymore. <laughs> you know, it, it's going to be Black Lives Matter. Because without, without that history, this wouldn't be. You know, so I just kind of wanted to add that. I'm glad you said that, Joe. I appreciate that because uh, through my education in music, I learned that as well. And growing up, like I said, in a musical family, uh, I just feel like it, it was a God gift anyway. You know, start, like I told Sky earlier, I started playing drums at the age of four. So, I mean, playing through what we feel inside and through pain. And I would tell you, I had some powerful performances playing through pain just alone. And I'll give you a short story. I was um, playing in a high school jazz ensemble. And it was this one song that had 10 different time signatures in it. I put my all into that song for the last my senior year. And my mom messed up the video. Lord Jesus, she could not record to save her life. <laughs> but it was one of my best performances in school. And I put everything, you know, I went through my whole four years in that jazz ensemble from racial slurs to uh, people saying I wasn't going to ever be anything. I put everything into that song because it was a very hard song to learn to begin with. But when I tell you, when I got done playing that song, when I felt like a weight was lifted off of me, it, it, it was powerful. And what, to, to answer your question, really, um, what's getting me through this time? is self-reflect. Um, me too, I know I'm religious. Um, I believe in God. I've been taking this time to reflect on myself. And I actually had to step away from social media for a couple of days because I've lost some friends because of everything that's going on. You'd be surprised when people show you their true self through actions that they see on TV. And it's just, it, they're revealing themselves to how they really feel about people of color. And it kind of hurt my feelings. I never thought they would feel that way because, you know, had great conversations with these people. So it, it hurt me. But at the same time, it's like, you no know, life goes on. I still have me, my family, um, collision drum family. <laughs> you know, I still got you guys, the drummer community. Uh, for something for all us musicians, we, we have this code. We all stick together. We all have each other's back. And that's, that's one brotherhood that I'm proud to be part of. I'm glad God gave me the gift of music because we all do really stick together. Yeah, we still have some that, that do that, but the majority of us stick together. And I thank God for all of you. And I thank God for the Collision um, Drumstick family. Thank God for you, Nicholas. Thank God for you, mate. Thanks so much for sharing. Honestly, amazing. Sky, do you want to share your thoughts as well before we round off, please? I was just going to thank everybody for sharing and being vulnerable and let me just run my little mouth. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, it, it's okay to take that step away from social media. It's okay to, you know, 
make sure that your needs are met because like you can't take action if you're not keeping your bucket full. So like I encourage everyone here as well as everyone in our community, like be engaged, be active. It is okay to be active in the ways that best suit you, but also take care of yourself because it is hard. It is overwhelming and it's, it's, it's challenging for all of us for different reasons. Um, you know, and it's important to acknowledge that self-reflection and making those progresses towards growth. Just be kind to yourself and be kind to others because that's that's really what all of this is about you know but I really just I want to commend you guys for just like being a part of our family like I really love that Carlton has built this family of musicians and I really just appreciate you guys coming and being vulnerable and sharing your insight with us um, so that way we can in, incite change and inspire growth in our community so thank you guys Thanks for being the leader, Sky. Absolutely inspiring. And again, thanks for being just a part of this conversation and, you know, being so vulnerable and just getting involved. And, and thank you certainly for, for your, all your contributions as well. And I want to speak on behalf of the team. I'm sure all the rest of the guys can as well. But yeah, certainly thank you for your time. And again, guys, thank you so much for all your time as well. I guess my take on sort of 10 cents as well, just to sort of round things off. Um, my view is sort of that, that health, wealth, happiness, you know, that, that spiritual aspect, that mental health aspect, that physical aspect you know, that's how you're going to stay healthy. And that's how you're going to get through this, in my opinion, you know, I'm never off the phone with you guys as artists, you know, my friends, family as well. And, you know, I hear, you know, your struggles daily. I hear what's going on. And, you know, I want you to lean on me. You know, I want to make myself as does the team personally, professionally available for you guys. You know, we all have our problems with that. We're facing day in, day out, some more than others. And it's making sure that you guys know that you can call on us, count on us as a team, as a family, as a community to make sure that we get through this together, you know, because no one has to go through things alone. It's, it, you know, it, it, it shouldn't have to be, and it doesn't need to be, we're here for you guys on your time when you're ready to share. And that's what's important to me. Um, yeah, just make sure you're healthy, happy, and making sure that you're filling yourself with music and so much just enriching your life. And uh, yeah, get, try drumming. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, definitely want to say thank you to everyone on today's call, on today's round table. It's been an absolute who, it's been fantastic. This has just been such a necessary conversation, such a powerful one at that. I think this has been, uh, yet again, another fantastic conversation. So yeah, really appreciate it. Really appreciate all your time today. Stay safe, stay well. Thank you to everyone watching, catching this up on the repeat, catching it on the live. Um, please share your thoughts and we'll definitely continue this story as well and continue the discussions. All right, guys. I really, thank I you, really thank appreciate you. y'all having this. Thank you. No, thank no you. problem. No problem. Thank you. This has been, no, no thanks. This has been necessary. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Sky. All right. <laughs> thank, yeah. you guys. thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Stay safe, guys. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.